So good morning everybody and welcome to our service of worship for Sunday the 6th of February and isn't it lovely to be back in the church. This is the first in-person service that I've done since before Christmas so it's really lovely to be back in. So welcome to everybody whether you're here worshiping with us in the church or whether you're watching the recording at home later on. I really hope and pray that all this um, inclement weather isn't causing anybody any problems. Now with all the paracuts last weekend, we're really lucky to be able to hold our joint service for the fifth Sunday in January and our thanks must go to the Reverend John Cook and the congregation of How Trinity Church in Afford for their kind hospitality. Now if you weren't able to make the service, the recording is um, available if you, if you haven't caught it already. And I was just about, just about managed to um, to post it online before the power went out. So that was that was really good. On Wednesday, the second of February, just Wednesday past, uh, many Christian traditions celebrated the festival of Candlemas. Now, Candlemas, which occurs forty days after Christmas, recognises the presentation of Jesus in the temple although we did actually reflect on that and reaction of Simeon and Anna in our service on the 9th of January. Now in the Roman Catholic traditions, Candlemas is also a celebration of the Virgin Mary's purification in accordance with Jewish law. Now many people, it's difficult looking at the weather outside at the moment, but many people associate this day with the start of spring, the appearance of snowdrops, also known as Candlemas Bells. And in the Christian faith, these flowers are also synonymous with hope. So I think that's all we need at the moment. We do need hope. Now, Candlemas is also a, a, a specific time because it, it marks the transition between the crib and the cross. So we look back in the celebration of the birth of Jesus at Christmas and prepare ourselves and look forward the start of Lent and the days of passion and crucifixion. So let's come together in our hearts and our minds to, to worship God this morning. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light which no darkness can quench. We light a candle to symbolise the light of Christ, which eternally shines and brings hope. Dear friends, 40 days ago we celebrated the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we recall the day on which he was presented in the temple, when he was offered to the Father and shown to his people. As a sign of his coming among us, his mother was purified as we now come to him for cleansing. In their own age, Simeon and Anna recognised him as their Lord, as we sing of his glory. Today we celebrate both the joy of his coming and his certain judgment. Looking back to the day of his birth and looking forward to the coming days of his passion. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. You gave us Jesus to be the light of the world. He makes our darkness to be light. Blessed be God. As we bear your light, may our lips never cease to sing your praise. We 
We gather to worship you, to praise you for your loving presence, and to be strengthened for the calling that you have given us. Here we are, Lord, waiting to learn your plans for us today, waiting to learn where you will be leading us this year, waiting to learn what you will have us do to bring your glory to this place at this time. We sing of your glory, Lord, and of all the beauty round about. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand hath made, I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. So let's stand and sing together our first hymn, that great acclamation of praise. How great thou art.
about the first snowdrop that we see. In Celtic Christianity, the 2nd of February was also celebrated as the festival of Imbolc, which corresponded with a cross quarter day on the solar calendar, halfway between the winter solstice and the spring equinox in the northern hemisphere. Some people lit candles to scare away evil spirits on dark winter nights. And people believed that the weather at Imbolc predicted the weather for the rest of the winter. So I don't know what we can take from that. The festival itself was full of hope, was full of promise, and was full of potential. And it followed the natural rhythms of the season. So as we lead into our prayers of approach and of confession, let us just pause from our busy lives for a few moments. Let us consider the winter that is drawing to a close, the bareness of trees awaiting spring's warmth, the first snowdrops to emerge and flower. Fallen leaves from winter that are now taken up once again by the soil as a source of nutrients. Nature's endless cycle of life and death. Signs of life within our own gardens as plants that seemed dead just a month ago are now beginning to show green. Springtime, the promise of new life. Springtime, the potential for growth. Springtime, the hope of harvests to come. This is your garden, Creator God, a thing of beauty beyond understanding. A poem that is being written not in words but in colours. Winds whisper, soaring birds, snowdrops petal, gentle rain, sunlight's warmth. This is your garden, Creator God, a thing of beauty beyond understanding. Now we're going to come close to God with our prayers of approach and confession. So let us pray. We come before you with thanksgiving in our hearts. We bow our knee before you to praise your name. We praise you for your constant love and faithfulness. You have never failed us, Lord. You answer us when we call. With your strength, you strengthen us. You fulfil your promises. Your love is eternal. We acknowledge you as the Almighty. We acknowledge all that you have blessed us with. We acknowledge that you care for each one of us. We acknowledge that you are our strength when we feel weak. We acknowledge that you know us individually, and you created us neatly and perfectly. We acknowledge that although you know us inside out, you still love us eternally. That love was shown so powerfully by sending us your Son, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for all that you mean to us and all that you have done for us. We thank you that you call each of us by name, and that with your disciples of old, we too are called to serve you and your people. So let this time of worship quiet our fears, soothe our bruised souls, and energise us for ministry in and with your beloved world. Let faith abide. Let hope abide. Let love abide here in this place here in our community, here in our world, but most of us, most of all, here in us. Lord God, you have done so much for us, more than we deserve, more than we can list and more than we can comprehend. For the times when we fall short, forgive us. For the times when we fail to acknowledge just how blessed we are, forgive us. For the times we show little care to those who are struggling, forgive us. Lord Jesus Christ, we are sorry for the words we use, our actions we commit, 
that harm others and cause tension. Yet as we approach you, we discover that your care for us remains strong. You call us blessed, for despite our ways, we remain right with you, forgiven, loved, and free. May we enter worship this day, ready to seek your will and your will alone. We are always surrounded by God's forgiving love, a love that has known us from birth and will never leave us. So bless us now, Lord, as we pray together in the words that Jesus taught his disciples. We say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for heaven. Now we're going to, in a way, continue with our prayers as we receive the forgiveness of God. God forgave my sin in Jesus' name. I've been born again in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, I come to you to share his love as he told me to. So I'd suggest that we remain seated as we sing our next hymn together. God forgave my sin. In Jesus' name. Last year. 
So although these figures are a bit out of date, they haven't improved a lot. Um, we sent these uh, leaflets out to all church members. And we are hoping that a lot of people will decide to play, but pay by standing order, as some people do, which for, for which we're very grateful. I personally have now set up a standing order, and so I don't have to worry about it. It's paid by the bank every month. In 2020, we raised £27,552, but we spent £30,818. It cost us a lot of money to open up the church just for one service. We have to pay for Simon, we have to pay for the organist, we have to pay for the church officer and the cleaner and the organist. And so it's a lot of money and that doesn't include the cost of electricity or the insurance that we have to pay each year or the ministry and mission fees which we have to pay to head office. So we would encourage as many of you as possible to give by standing order. If you're not a church member but would like to support the church, then we would very much appreciate your offerings. And if you'd like to see one of these leaflets, there are some on the table as you go out of the church, uh, along with a response form which you can fill in and let me have or let any other of the church members have and they'll pass it on to me. Um, there's also some standing order forms if you don't do internet banking, so you can fill one of those in and send it to your bank. Don't send that back to me, it needs to go directly to your bank. So thank you very much for attending our service today and we look forward to hearing from you very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. The Church of Scotland have developed a programme called Joyful Generosity, which they introduce like this. Joyful generosity encourages us to share in the blessings God has given, reflect on our personal giving and act in response to, to his generosity. Our God is generous and joyful. In Genesis we read about the wonderful gift of creation and see God's own joyful response at the end of each day. God saw that it was good. God took joy from the work of his own hands. He took pleasure from creating something good, something to be shared. From the beginning, generosity and joy are inextricably linked. It is a joy to give to those we love. We do it cheerfully, gaining as much pleasure from giving as we do from receiving. In Deuteronomy 26, 11, we see generous giving closely followed by rejoicing in all of the good things that God has provided. When we give generously to God in thankfulness for all that he has given, we do so with joy and we are richly blessed in return. And we will be using some of the resources from the joyful generosity in our service today. Our first reading is Psalm 138 and I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. I give you thanks, O Lord, with all my heart. I will sing your praises before the gods. I bow before your holy temple as I worship. I praise your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness. For your promises are backed by all the honour of your name. As soon as I pray, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me strength. Every king in all of the earth will thank you, Lord. For all of them will hear your words. Yes, they will sing about the Lord's ways, for the glory of the Lord is very great. The Lord is great and cares for the humble, but he keeps his distance from the proud. Though I am surrounded by troubles, you will protect me from the anger of my enemies. 
You reach out your hand, and the power of your right hand saves me. The Lord will work out his plans for my life, for your faithful love, O Lord, endures forever. Don't abandon me, for you made me. Amen. Well, this is a psalm of David, giving thanks and praise to God and acknowledging that God's love is steadfast. And God is ever faithful. He recognises that when he calls to God, God will answer him. But how often do we call out to God? And when we do, do we expect a sort of answer? Or do we just say that our prayers with, with no expectations whatsoever? David appears to be no doubt that God will answer him. He tells us that when he called to God, not only did God answer him, but also strengthen his soul. So this is a man who knows God well. Do we know God well? David goes on to remind us that God has a special interest in the humble or the lowly. Not just the kings and the princes, but those who are usually overlooked, those who are forgotten, those who are excluded. Society may exclude or look past those who aren't quite like us, but God doesn't. God regards the lowly. And David goes on to recognise that the Lord's purposes will be fulfilled for him, no matter who we are or what we have to do, we have a purpose. And as we draw closer to God, God will draw closer to us and will use us to fulfill the purpose that God has made for us. I'm now going to ask Janet to, uh, to come up and read um, our second reading. Generosity encouraged. Remember this whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly, not under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly. So that in all things at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. <coughs> now he supplies who supplies seeds to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will encourage the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord people, that is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the Gospel of Christ, and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you, because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And from the, um, the joyful generosity. In the beginning God was generous. The story of creation shows us this. 
And God provided in abundance, with generosity and joyfulness, evident throughout creation. So when God made humanity in their image, not only were they made to be creatures of community, imagination and creativity, but we were also made in the likeness of God's generosity. We have the ability and potential to be beings of abundant generosity and giving. The acts of giving in Christian living seem to go hand in hand, but often it can feel as though we're given with heavy hearts, out of duty to God and the church. But we are promised throughout the Bible that if we give out of a true place of generosity, in love for both God and the church, then it will be returned to us. In fact, God promises that we will receive more than we gave in abundance. That is a good investment. But as the old saying goes, you don't get, you, you don't give to receive. We have to be careful not to confuse the purpose behind our offerings with the benefits they can return. To give from a place of true generosity, we must be selfless, purposeful and committed. Giving because we want to, not because we have to or, or because we want God's gracious payout. The reading is taken from the ninth chapter of the second epistle to the Corinthians. It is written by Paul in Macedonia in between 55 and 56 AD. This chapter continues the topic of generous giving commenced in the previous chapter. And Paul affirms to the reader that the act, indeed the ministry of giving, is one of God's highest ways of enriching lives. Not only the lives of those who receive, but equally those who give generously. Paul highlights four ways in which giving can enrich our lives. It multiplies our faith fruitfulness joyfulness, usefulness and thankfulness. As we explore the passage, four details for the give that true generosity means to give without casualness, complaint or coercion. Paul writes about the positive impact that generous giving can have, not only on the recipient but also on the donor as well. He writes that the giver will be enriched in every way so that they can be generous with others. It can sometimes feel uncertain about giving financially. It can sometimes feel safer to give less than we are able, possibly even to give what we're able to give. But would we ever trust in God's promise enough to give more than we feel comfortable with? Paul encourages us to examine why. To examine why we give at all. Do we do it out of expectation? Out of a sense of duty? Guilt or out of worship to God. Anne Frank sums it sits up perfectly in one of her diaries when she wrote, No one has ever become poor by giving. And Paul was writing to the believers in Corinth about the surpassing grace that God has given us. In our next much loved hymn, We'll sing of that grace, that amazing grace, that saved a wretch like me. So I suggest we stand and sing together our next hymn, Amazing Grace.
Receive our gifts of self and substance. They have belonged to you since our very beginning. We give them freely, joyfully, prayerfully. With them we praise you. Amen. The Faith Impact Forum of the Church of Scotland has been in touch with members of our partner church, the Reformed Church in the Ukraine. And like all of us, they are watching with concern as armed forces mass at the Russian border and the threat of conflict grows. Lord Wallace, the moderator of the General Assembly, and the very Reverend Dr. Susan Brown, convener of the Faith Impact Forum, are asking us all to join in prayer for those who are frightened and at risk in Ukraine. So I've included a prayer for um, Ukraine in our prayers of intercession. So now let us come close to God with our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Let us pray. God of light and revelation, as the darkness of winter gives way to the hope and renewal of spring, we praise you for the beauty of the earth around us, for hilltop and sanctuary, for ocean bed and landscape. We give you thanks and praise. Lord Jesus Christ, may your light shine upon us this day as we gather to lift our hearts and voices in praise. Open our ears to your word and offer our very selves in service. Inspiring and challenging spirit, be with us in our hearts and in our minds. Fill us with your love and peace so that we share these gifts with all and with each other. Loving Father God, you sent your Lord Jesus Christ to be acclaimed as the glory of Israel. We are your people called to serve and worship you. Look with mercy on your church. Guide your church in right paths that we may know the task to which we are called. And strengthen us, for we know that it is only in your power that we are able to fulfil your promises. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. You transform the darkness of human lives with the light of your salvation. And so we pray that your transforming light would drive out darkness and fear and bring hope to the lives of those who do not know your presence with them. The news can be difficult to listen to and to read. When that news relates to faces we know and to voices familiar to us, it becomes all the harder to hear. Lord God, we ask you to hold the people of Ukraine deep in your heart. Protect them, we pray, from violence, from political gamesmanship, from being used and abused. Give, we pray, the nations of the world the courage and the wisdom to stand up for justice and the courage, too, to dare to care generously. Lord, in your mercy, take from us all the tendencies in us that seek to lord it over others. Take from us those traits that see us pursuing our own needs and wants before those of others. 
Teach us how to live in love and dignity and respect, following your example. Oh, Father God, help all those who are in difficulty today, the sick and the suffering, the anxious and the anguish, the fearful and the frightened, the guilty and the grieving, the distressed and the dying. As we seem to be seeing a light at the end of the tunnel with regard to this pandemic, we continue to pray for all those who are ill at home or in hospital or in residential care. We pray for our doctors and our nurses and our healthcare workers and our carers. Loving Father God, we pray for our loved ones wherever they may be. We pray that your loving arm will embrace them and keep them all safe. And now, Lord, in the silence of our hearts, we pray for those known to us who need your special love today. Please be with them and comfort them, O oh Lord. Remember in our hearts and minds the names and faces of those who we have loved and are now with you in paradise. Hold them close to you as we hold them close in our hearts to us until the time finally comes when we shall be reunited in your glorious presence. Wherefore all our prayers both spoken and unspoken. In the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to ask, uh, invite Janet to come to the Our third reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 13 to 21. The parable of the rich fool. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in abundance of possessions. Then he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, drink. Eat and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life will de be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves that is not rich toward a God. Thanks be to God. In our next uh, much loved hymn, we commit ourselves to God. We ask God to take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. I suggest we stand and sing together our next hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be.
short reflection called The Candle and the Flower by Mary Hathaway. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. And without light or shape, form and pattern are shrouded in darkness. Without light, there is no growth, no abundance of living. Without light, there is no colour in endless variation. For within you burns all light, and from you blossoms all beauty. So, Lord Jesus, you are truly the light of the world. But in your light dwells all the beauty of the world also. So our light of Epiphany bright, burns brightly at Candlemas. Coming 40 days after Christmas, the celebration of Candlemas serves to reignite the light of Christ as our emphasis moves from crib to cross. Here the 40 days is significant as very soon the church begins on another 40 day journey through Lent which this year begins on the 3rd of March. It's almost like the, the focus of Christ's light is changing from the star of Bethlehem to the glory of resurrection light. And we as followers of Christ are asked to walk in that light every day of our lives. Now the passage that Janet read out to us is subtitled the, the Parable of the Rich Fool. And it's told in response to a brother asking Jesus to judge the right of a man for an equal share of an inheritance. In those times, you see, the firstborn sons were entitled to double the inheritance share. Oh, I suppose it's most likely this is a younger brother appealing to Jesus to get a, a better share of the inheritance. And the key to understanding what's really behind this parable is in verse 15 where Jesus warns, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And Jesus answers to warn against the prioritization of accumulation of wealth and possessions. Life is so much more than just an abundance of possessions. And there's a dual message from the parable. First, we're not to devote our lives to gathering and accumulating wealth. There's also an interesting point made in the parable where Jesus describes God saying to the man in the story, then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? So we're encouraged to question why you should accumulate all this stuff, because the old saying goes, we can't take it with us. It gets left behind to others who didn't earn it and won't appreciate it. Furthermore, if money is your master, that means God isn't. The second point is that we're not blessed by God in order to hoard our wealth to ourselves. We're blessed to be a blessing in the lives of others. And we're blessed to build the kingdom of God. Throughout the Bible, we're shown that when we use what we have for God, then our blessings will indeed grow. The point is clear. If we honour God with what we have received, we will be blessed with much, much more. I'm just going to finish with a, a prayer from the Joyful Generosity leaflet. So let's just pray. Generous God, how do we begin to thank you for all that we have been blessed with? Thank you for the world that you designed so preciously and brought into creation. Because of you, we have so much to be thankful for in this world. As we lift up those who feel alone, isolated and unloved, 
and ask for them to be comforted. We thank you for relationships, the opportunities to make new ones, develop old ones and the chance to show generosity in our thoughts, words and actions. As we lift up those who suffer persecution, hatred and conflict because of their faith and ask for peace for them, we thank you for our congregations, for the fellowship that we can share with each other, for the freedom that we have to come and worship you in this beautiful place. As we lift up those who interpret difference as something to be feared, and as we ask for their minds and hearts to be opened and filled with love, joy and understanding, we thank you for our various communities, for the opportunities to meet our neighbours, helping each other, sharing with all who we encounter. As we lift up those who are homeless, hungry and struggling with addiction, asking for your grace and mercy to be shown, we thank you for charities, both home and abroad, which are meeting people in their hour of need and offering a kind and caring hand of friendship. And Lord, we ask for our hearts to be filled with love, for your world and thank you for the opportunity to be able to display this generosity in our own lives. Hear all of our prayers this day whether spoken out loud or in the silence of our hearts and all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the challenge, the challenge for us as a body of believers is how can we spread the message? How can we spread the good news of the gospel? In the stewardship campaign here in Upper Donside and in the National Giving Day initiative that we ran in Crushley Took back in October, we're looking to raise much needed funds to keep our churches running and providing that crucial role in our communities. But giving back to God is so much more than that. What about giving of our time and our talents? Now all congregations right across the country, right across the world in a lot of cases, all congregations are looking for dedicated, enthusiastic people who can help us to drive forward. Whether it be working within the church itself or working out there in the community. So please think carefully about this. And if you're able, and if you're interested, and able to help out in whatever way, then please, please get in touch with me and we can, we can have a chat and I'll take you through. As followers of Christ, we're charged with not only walking in the light of Christ, but sharing that light with whoever we meet. And in our final much loved hymn, we ask for the light of Christ to shine upon us. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. So I suggest we stand and sing our final hymn, Lord, the light of your love is shining.
left, please. So many thanks for joining us for our morning worship here in Stuftal. Many thanks to Laura for playing for us. Thank you very much indeed. And again, Janet, not only for giving us an introduction to, introduction to the, the programme, but also for reading for us. Thank you. Thank you both very much indeed. A huge thank you to all of you for coming along to the church here this morning and um, braving the wintry weather conditions. And a big thank you to everyone who contributed towards the Upper Downside Stewardship Programme. Now, our service next Sunday will be held at 10 o'clock in Two Church. And everyone will be made most welcome. But if you're not able to come along, then the service again will be recorded and posted as usual on Facebook and YouTube hopefully to watch from 6 o'clock on Sunday evening. Again, if you're on our, the email distribution list, I'll send out more information throughout the week. There will also be a joint service next Sunday held together with our friends in North Parish, which will be held in Rhiney Church at 10.30, led by the Reverend Regine Sheen. Now, in the meantime, whatever this week may bring, may the love of God go with us, and keep us all, and all whom we love, safe and well. Now, our benediction this morning is a responsive one. So, can I ask you to, to stand if you're able, please? Father, we have sung your praise with shepherds and angels. May Christ be born in our hearts today. Praise to Christ our light. We have shared in the joy of Simeon and Anna. Help us like them to trust your word. Praise to Christ our light. We have greeted Jesus, the light of the world. May we be filled with the light of your love. Praise to Christ our light. We stand near the place of new birth. Let us shine with the light of your love. We turn from the crib to the cross. Let us shine with the light of your love. We go to carry his light. Let us shine with the light of your love. Thanks be to God.